Looking for a guaranteed way to create content that resonates with your audience? Start a podcast, interview your ideal clients, and let them choose the topic of the interview. Because if your ideal clients care about the topic, there's a good chance the rest of your audience will care about it too. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. I'm your host for today's episode, Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. I'm joined today by Ann Garini. She is the VP of Marketing and Partnerships at Affinity. Ann, how are you doing today? I am doing well. Thanks so much for having me, Logan. Thank you for joining us again. For folks who uh, haven't heard Ann on the podcast before, she is a repeat guest. Back on episode 288, she helped us uh, diagnose three common ABM problems and what to do about those. So I highly recommend checking out the content that she shared in that episode. Today, we're going to be talking about how to grow your network according to research. Before we dive straight into that topic, though, Ann, for folks who aren't familiar with you and the team at Affinity, and obviously you've had a a role change since the last time you were on the podcast. I'd love for you to share a little bit about your background and what you and the team at Affinity are up to these days. So I've been working in startups for a little over a decade, um, helping teams both B2B and B2C with growth and go to market, specifically around marketing. Uh, I joined Affinity a little over a year and a half ago. And really what we are is we're a relationship intelligence platform. And what that means is that we help teams manage and leverage their relationships. Unlike traditional CRMs that are just big warehouses and places for you to store all your relationship data, we realize there's this treasure trove of data that every organization sits on, and that's communication data. And so we spent a couple of our first few years just figuring out how to mine this data, how to figure out how to cultivate and structure it augment it and make it accessible and really easy to use for any team. And we started off selling initially into venture capital, financial institutions, and now we're kind of spreading our wings after our first year and a half of uh, sales. So definitely an exciting time. Yeah, very fun time, uh, you know, at that point of scale. And, you know, I, I love what you guys are doing. You know, one of our our core values at Sweetfish is that relationships are our oxygen. And, and we talk about the power of, you know, content-based networking, whether it's through a podcast, a webinar series, or any sort of content, how you can build meaningful relationships by creating content with the people in your ideal audience. So, uh, you know, networking and this idea of leveraging the power of relationships, we're, we're so passionate about. So I'm, I'm really excited to have you share uh, this perspective on to give people some tactical ideas to really apply how to grow your network. And you guys have, have backed this, you know, by some data that you guys have done. So um, I want to kick this off, Anne, with the idea of an open network, because, uh, you know, I've read uh, the guide that you guys put out on this. And um, one of the things it compares is an open network to a closed network and the importance there. And I want to get to that next. But for folks who aren't aware, could you kind of unpack that term of, you know, what really is an open network? Yeah, absolutely. An open network is basically a network where members are connected to different clusters of people, so really people who don't know each other. It, you know, in contrast, a closed network is where members primarily are connected to people that they, they tend to know. So, for instance, if I'm connected to, you know, all these people in SaaS, having, these, having an open network means you're connected to people that 
aren't just in this industry, who aren't just focused on it. It's people in all other verticals from finance to insurance. And what this does, Ronald Burke, who was one of the um, world's top network scientists, had done a bunch of research on it. When Affinity was in its infancy, we, we had to, you know, we looked at this research to understand how do the best networkers leverage their network and what can people do better to really tap into the value of their network. Mm -hmm. And um, this was one of the key pieces for Ronald Burke was to have an open network and it really does dictate um, one success. So an open network is, is not being, you know, so laser focused on knowing everybody within, you know, one circle where everybody that, you know, already knows everybody else. It sounds like, you know, there's some benefit in getting some outside perspective from maybe the bubble that can be created, whether that's in, in, in SAS or any other industry, you know, uh, you touch on SAS and a lot of our, our guests and listeners are in that space. So, you know, that's a good example. What can you tell us about, you know, the importance and the benefits now that you've kind of differentiated a closed and an open network what are some of the benefits that people see by consciously building an open network yeah the benefits of an open network are allowing yourself to really expand the people that you can tap into especially for referrals and introductions which statistically speaking are the best way from a sales perspective to close deals um, there's been a lot of research so an average can close deals four times faster with referrals. Um, referrals also convert a lot quicker, so you can speed up sales velocity. And they also garner a higher retention rate. And because of this open network, you're being able to tap into these other circles, which can grow and continue to kind of flourish and enable you and your team to, you know, reach beyond your current, you know, circle of, of mm -hmm. uh, connections. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that you touched on something really great there that I think a lot of salespeople especially recognize is that, you know, there is power in referral. We know that those deals close faster, you know, they stay longer. There's just a different feeling. You know, I've been in that in that world where you're working a deal that that comes in cold or some other demand gen facilitates that initial relationship versus when that relationship is fostered out of another relationship, i.e. a referral. But I think where a lot of people struggle is how do they actually, you know, become good networkers? How do they generate referrals? And in the the guide that you guys put out, and there were four habits of what you guys call highly effective super connectors. Could you share those with listeners? Because I think that's where a lot of people are kind of falling short. They're like, I, I realize the power of referrals. I kind of have uh, a plan in place, but I don't really know how to execute it on a repeatable basis. Yeah, and it steps back to to the open network. It's all about the strategy involved. So we've been mm -hmm. fortunate enough to get to interview some of the world's best super connectors and to really understand how they grew their network. And these super connectors can pretty much walk in every any door based off of the people that they know. And they do a number of things, but what's really interesting and in like how they in leveraging how they leverage the power of their network is first of all, they understand that relationships are asymmetrical. I think especially in this like era of social media that we've been living in for the past you know decade, we've started to rely on these vanity metrics where more is always better. Mm -hmm. You know, you think of the most connected people. Well, they obviously just know the most people. Well, not every relationship is the same. Not every note is equal. And so understanding which relationships actually provide the most value and dedicating the appropriate amount of time towards those individuals really can help you prioritize to understand how to maximize your network. Right. So one of the things you guys touched on in the guide and was, you know, this, this max capacity of, of relationships, both, you know, psychologically and just logistically, we we feel like social media has completely opened the door to form as many relationships rather as possible, but there's still a, a human cap on how many uh, meaningful relationships that we can actually create, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at Robin Dunbar, who was an anthropologist and who came up with the now very famous Dunbar 
number, which is basically how many people can we truly have relationships with? And that number is 150. And so again, with social media, we have this, we've been focusing on these kind of vanity metrics of followers and, you know, likes and comments, thinking that that's really how we're going to grow our network. But Robin Dunbar even went back in the area of social media and recently reported that still there's only a certain number of people that we can have in our circle of influence. And there's only a certain number of people that we can truly have these close relationships with. So it's imperative that we understand who truly is providing us the most value. It's not necessarily, you know, it, it, we've, we've got to get away from this quantity game and start focusing on the quality. Yeah. So one of the other things um, that you guys listed in the guide as, you know, a an attribute of super connectors was they have a holistic understanding of not only their network, but their team's network. Can you unpack that a little bit for us, Anne? Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's an imperative piece to, you know, all of the people that we interviewed who are classified as these super connectors. And they really understand, you know, how to, it's not just about you and yourself and who you know, but how you expand past that 150 of close connections is really by understanding who your, everyone on your team kind of 150 is, to put it in mm -hmm. Dunbar speak. And understanding, again, like how someone, how bringing someone in, say if you wanted to get in eventually into the healthcare industry, how bringing someone into your network, becoming a close connection with them or bringing them onto your team who has experience there, how that can truly expand your network and, and you know, provide those valuable referrals. And what these super connectors do is this understanding of, this holistic view of their network is they constantly know who knows who and how well. And that's really important, again, for being able to truly leverage all the power that's in there. Yeah, absolutely. The third attribute of a super connector that I absolutely loved, I've heard James, our founder, talk about this all the time. He he very much has talked about this in building a brand. He talks about it in, in relationships. He talks about it in building a business. And that is that super connectors understand the long game. And, and I imagine that kind of goes back to kind of our typical social media mindset of instant gratification. I can connect with anyone, therefore I can have a relationship and maybe do business with someone instantaneously. Is that kind of the the reference here in super connectors understanding the long game, man? Yeah, it's not like you just meet someone one day and they're instantly going to provide you value. Even with your own team, it's not like you just bring them in and snap, there's instant value. So you always have to think of the long game and like strategically think 10 steps ahead of how you can break through the next door or into the next vertical. And the piece of this that I really like, one of my favorite books is Adam Grant's Give and Take. Mm -hmm. And the piece that I really like there is, you know, don't always just be asking of your network. Provide value. Be there to be giving a referral before you ask for one. These short things, so when you do need something from your network, you've already built this actual relationship. And, you know, a tangible example of that and, you know, a mistake even of my own, back a few years ago when a company, an early stage startup I was working at went under, your first instinct is to tap your network to try to find that next opportunity. But what I realized is a lot of these people I was reaching out to, I hadn't talked to in years. Mm -hmm. And so the learning from that is to continue understanding who, again, provides the most value and maintaining those relationships. It's not just about social media. It's about the human connection. And I think that that's where super connectors, especially these people who do it best, really understand that. They're mm -hmm. continuously providing value to the people in their network. So when they do need something, those asks are granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If all you're doing is withdrawing from the emotional bank account from those in your network, 
then you're you're going to be running on empty um, when it comes to you know the value of your network. If you're not adding value to your network, you can't expect to just be extracting that all the time. The last thing I know um, you guys touched on in this guide and that I think would be great to share with listeners, and you touched on it there. It's not just about you know connections and followers, and I think this is going to be something that's very important, especially for salespeople it, moving forward. Is super connectors exhibit high levels of emotional intelligence. Tell us a little bit about where you see this fitting into the context we've been talking about of building your network. Yeah, similarly, they, it's the understanding that this network is, is based on people. And, you know, humans are the basic fabric of the economy, and it's all about people. And you have to treat them right. You have to have a, be self-aware, have an understanding of what value can I provide? What can I give? And also be aware to know where are my deficiencies? Because understanding, especially early on, okay, I don't have connections here. I don't have an understanding of, say, the healthcare industry or maybe insurance industry. I know there's opportunities there, but I need to bring people into my network. They're going to counterbalance that. Mm -hmm. So it's being self-aware. It's understanding that these are people that we are communicating with and, you know, going back to give and take, it's, yeah, no one, no one wants to be used and abused and, and, um, you know, especially in the, these business relationships. And we all have those people who constantly are asking for things and we know that we don't appreciate it. So I think it's going back to really remembering how to, how to treat people properly and a big piece of that, too, is being gracious. You know, when someone does do you a favor, when someone does open open a door for you, it's remembering to do the little things, you know, say thank you, send a gift. Again, back to don't just take. There's also been some recent studies about why giving actually is one of the things that can make us happiest in life which I find really interesting. And I think people want to give, people want to provide others value, but no one wants to just feel like they're being taken, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, it's being, it's being human is really that, that fourth piece and um, treating others with respect and being gracious. Absolutely. I think those are, those are wise words to, to leave listeners with today. Very, very sage advice. And I think it fits in nicely with this, you know, understanding that, you know, the value of your network is there to be tapped. But if we're just sitting on it and not approaching it the right way, then it's, it's not really giving us any value. And I, I really appreciate you coming back on the show again. Um, I, I think this is a fascinating topic, as you can tell. If listeners would like to ask any follow-up questions, stay connected with you, or learn any more about Affinity, what's the best way for them to find you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can find us on LinkedIn. You can... Uh... We are at Affinity Inc. And on Twitter, uh, our handle is Affinity. You, our website is affinity.co. And anyone who's interested in accessing the white paper, it's obviously for free, available on our site at affinity.co slash relationship hyphen intelligence. And yeah, I encourage everyone to, to read it and really focus on how to grow a better network. And what are the tools and tricks that you can do to really be more like a super connector and open new doors? Absolutely. And thank you so much for being on the show today. This was a blast. Thank you so much for having me. Always appreciate it. Digital marketing agencies have a tough job. You have to stay on top of the latest marketing strategies for your clients and your agency. What if there was a way you could address both at the same time? Imagine your agency putting out content with greater quality and quantity. Envision bringing your clients a turnkey solution for one of B2B marketing's fastest growing media strategies, podcasting. You know all those clients asking for your help with their account-based marketing efforts? Picture being the first to bring them the idea of content-based networking, showing them the proven strategy for breaking into their most coveted accounts. Here's the concept. Sweetfish Media is looking to work with a limited number of innovative agencies interested in a new partnership model. We produce a podcast for your agency. 
you introduce the power of podcasting and Sweetfish services to your clients. Everybody wins. Learn more at sweetfishpartners.com.